small light sources. I know everybody hates them, but I hate the big lights and the big modifiers. Taking them out aside, you know, on location, it's a pain for me. I know everybody carries the carts and stuff like that, but you can do really well with smaller light sources. Now, this is the Click Magnum. There's no replacement for this. Now, I'm using the A2 um, and the Profoto Click Softbox. You know, the AD100 Godox, same thing. Um, the Angler Click Box, whatever it's called, same thing, except one third the price. Uh, this, there's no replacement for it. It is fantastic. It works with the AD100. When I'm shooting in high speed sync, you know how much power you lose because you're in high speed sync. Um, this gives me a lot of that power back um, with this little thing. I just absolutely love this. It just clicks on and you're ready to go. And again, it does work with the AD100 uh, perfectly fine. This is amazing. It gives you so much power back. The other thing is I get to use the Connect, um, the, the Profoto Connect. I love these little Connect uh, remotes with the Sony a7R5. Um, I haven't used this with this camera yet, so I really wanted to try it. We're going to use it in TTL mode a lot of the time to see how it does. Um, anyway, that's what we're doing today. We're going to figure out how to make smaller light sources look good versus the giant soft boxes. Uh, let's get to the shoot, see how we do. I'm sure you noticed how often I use small lights and small modifiers in this channel. And I know it frustrates a lot of people, so I really wanted to dig into this a little bit deeper to help you, um, you know, create better light with smaller light sources. So this is the Click Magnum indoors. I love the specular light that I get off of this uh, modifier. It's just incredible. You can see, you know, when I take it off and, and do the same kind of shot, you know, it's still a harder light. It's still a beautiful light, but I lose that specular look because of that Click Magnum. Where this thing really shines, and I don't want to make this video about this modifier. Um, I'm not trying to sell it, but I do want to show you the benefits of this. Now here I'm shooting outdoors, midday sun, one eight thousandths of a second, a high speed sync with a 100 watt light source. Um, and it is producing light like mad. It increases the power of your light source so much. Um, and you can see the distance. It, it's like this is a, a really decent distance away from the model so i'm getting full coverage head to toe but it's still producing the light i need you know for midday sun high speed sync that's the benefit of this light source now you'll you'll notice i always have my light up quite a bit higher uh than than most because i want to carve out the the features of the face um you know i really want to define you know the model's features and that's how i do it with light you know i keep it up just a little bit higher embrace those shadows it works if you want to soften the shadow it's not the kind of look you like all you have to do is move the light source closer to the the camera source you know so if i'm moving it you know closer to the angle of the camera it's going to lessen those shadows quite a bit and remember all you have to do is tilt that head up just a little bit just say hey, turn to the left turn to the right look up just a little bit look down just a little bit it's going to change that look as well um and we'll go through that because you know I know everybody wants soft, natural, soft lighting, um, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I, I love soft lighting myself, uh, but there are times where you just want that, you, you just want to chisel out the, the face, the features, everything. And if you're shooting outdoors in bright sunlight, you know, it's kind of odd to have this perfectly even lighting when you have blue skies and you know there's the sun beating down. It just doesn't look as natural to me. Um, now, indoors, we're going over to the Click Octa. Again, the Angler Fastbox is going to give you the same look. Now, you see the shadow falling off from her arm, uh, obviously because her arm was up. Drop the arm down, the shadow's gone, because I'm on the same axis of the camera, the, you know, the light source. The funny thing is, is, believe it or not, you can move the model away from the backdrop to lose that shadow, or you can move them even closer to the backdrop to lose that shadow. It's that in-between zone where you're going to pop that shadow off. Like, I moved her closer to the backdrop for that shot, turned up the little bit, little bit. the shadow just completely disappeared because I'm, I'm lighting the backdrop as even as her. Now, the other way to do this is an extreme feather. I'm feathering this right across her. I have it at a really a deeper angle than I would use even with a larger softbox, and I'm dropping that shadow all the way to the left of the camera, um, and the feathering is, is giving it even light across her. 
I'm still getting that little bit of shadow on that side for depth, um, you know, for, for features, but the feathering is helping with the shadow part of it. I like shadow even on a backdrop, but I know a lot of people hate it. Um, so these are just the techniques when using a smaller light source that will help you with shadowing. Now I'm going to go into a full beauty lighting here. And it's not like the ideal beauty lighting for me, because again, I'm, I'm more of a shadow person, you know, more of a harsh light look. But, you know, for so many of you that like that softer light look, this is it. You know, I'm keeping that angle as close to the camera as I can, just a slight tilt down, putting her as close to the backdrop as I can so I can light them both evenly. And I'm getting that carved out look, not as much as I would like, but it's, it's there, but it's that soft light that everybody's looking for. Um, for me, this is, it's beautiful lighting with a small like, pocket size light and, and a small 24 inch modifier. The nice part about that small modifier is like you just collapse it with two fingers. I'm using a small aluminum light stand. I don't have to have a big light stand or anything. Um, it's not going anywhere. Obviously, the wind will still take this if you're outdoors, um, but it's less likely than with a you know a 30 or a 40 or 60 inch softbox. Um, it's just more convenient, easier to carry around. I, I just love this setup. Now, I, I'm going to walk around the building with this light and really show you how I carve out the light even more. You can see I just tilted her head down and I'm getting that carved look on her jaw or uh, cheekbones. It's, you know, angle with her face and, and the model's body and everything is just as important as the angle of the light. Moving this all the way to the right, remember the light source is now close to her, so I'm losing the shadow because it just looks like fall off versus a shadow. Now we went down in the building here. This is a very dark area and I'll show you later just how dark it is, but you know, for her, she has black hair and she's getting to the black door. You know, the, the issue here is losing that hair and having it blend into the door. So I'm feathering it both directions, uh, you know, across the back of the door and across the front of her um, because of this extreme angle. So it's giving light to the door, you know, pulling that black out of the door and going across her so it's wrapping around her just a little bit more than normal. That bookshelf on her... Uh, the side is actually helping as a reflector as well. So, you know, use your environment as much as you possibly can. Now, I notice a lot of people are using the angle of the light closer down, like further down and directly in front of the model, which is just flattening the features. You'll notice how high I keep this light, um, you know, so it's feathering across the top of her more than anything, because I want to carve out that skin, you know, or carve out that face. For me, that's, you know, that's beautiful to me. I, I want that 3D look in the face and I'm carving out her features just by keeping that a little bit higher. Again, you know, rather than moving the light, just having her tilt her head up or down or turn it left or right is going to kind of change the complete look of an image. And, you know, not posing a model directly to say, you know, move this way, move that way, put your hand here, put your hand there just saying, hey, just turn your head a little bit to the left or turn your head a little bit to the right. Or, hey, could you tilt up just a little bit? Letting them do their own poses and just making those minor adjustments is going to change the entire look of this light. Now, again, this is a dark area. I just wanted to show you what I'm dealing with without the strobe, um, you know, versus with the softbox. It, it, it is a dark, dark area here. Again, feathering across the top of her, that the bottom of that softbox is above her head and I'm carving out her, you know, her jawline, her cheekbones, you know, just by keeping that light just a little bit higher than normal. Again, smaller light source, you know, this is what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for that soft, dreamy look in lighting. I'm looking for defined look. Obviously, I have to drop it down because she's down on the table. Um, and I really want to, like, control the, the light on the eyes. You know, hiding the, the eyes for a shot uh, versus, you know, showing them in bright light, totally two different looks. Here I'm further right across the front of her, not even at her. I'm one of the lights got or the eyes gone. They're gone. If it just a little slight tilt up and I get the light, you know, the, the light that I want on her face again, angles, angles, angles. Uh, you know, I can't stress that enough here. I just want to show you, you know, here's the light on one side of her flip it to the other side. It's a completely different look again, small light source, full coverage. Um, you know, these little lights work, uh, you know, I, 
it's easier. Don't get me wrong. I understand it is completely 100% easier with a giant light source because they can just move anywhere and at any angle and everything looks good. But a small light source really allows you to carve out features and give different looks and really control your shadowing um, for, you know, more defined artistic looks. And, and you can, you know, if a model has a round face or a narrow face, you can really control the look of it just with the light and the angles. Um, anyway, I, I hope this helps. I hope you gain something from this video. You know, the, the big feature here is, or the big message here is, is use your angles, uh, you know, learn your light source and learn your model's face, uh, and body to control and use the lighting and the angles that you need for the best look. Um, <laughs> I know that was a bit of a ramble, but I just wanted to get this out there because I know a lot of you were frustrated with a small light source, but really wanted to use it. So I hope this helps again. Thanks for watching as always, and I'll talk to you soon.